Hey everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics here. Uh, some people have commented that they really like to see the kind of how it's made or the kind of process that goes into making uh, some of our parts here. And uh, so from a design standpoint, I, I'll, I'll kind of show you a, a simple one we did recently. That was our new kickstand pad that uh, people are buying and liking right now. Uh, I've learned not to show things before the uh, finished product is available. So early on, I tried to show people through the process of when our passenger grab rails were being made. And it turns out people, most people just don't have the imagination to see a plastic part becoming a real part. And so I've just decided I'll never do that again. But after something's out and people already have seen it finished and can understand it and enjoy it and like it, then I'll kind of go back and show you the ugly underpinnings of what goes on to make a product. So. Uh, for this new bike, um, I wanted to do um, a kickstand pad that uh, really accented the bike and had a really nice aesthetic. Um, and so that kind of actually just started with a piece of cardboard. So I took, you know, just a piece of cardboard and made a general shape that I wanted. And, uh, and we had to, you know, we bought another kickstand from Honda. And I have a, a CAD guy that I work with. His name's Adam Ambrecht uh, here locally. And Adam and I, you know, I sketch on a napkin, give him my ideas, or I'll give him a little cardboard cutout, that kind of thing. He'll go home and do a, a first, uh, first version of a CAD model. And uh, on parts like this with, uh, you know, odd shapes and such, uh, the wonderful thing has come to be common, which is three-dimensional printing, or some people call it rapid prototyping. And with uh, uh, rapid prototyping, we're able to cut tons of wasted time and money out of the process of uh, creating new parts. Those in, part in particular, those that have random shapes that uh, and are doing random jobs that uh, you know maybe just an object out in space. So, you know, we can put our ideas down on paper and Adam can create them into a three-dimensional model. But when you actually print it <clears throat> and try and put it on the bike, it's rare that it's just going to come out and look right. You know, for instance, our, our first attempt at our grab rails was, was horrible. It, it, whatever we thought it was going to be, it didn't look anything right once we got it printed and we put it on the bike. So from a cardboard model, Adam has his three-dimensional model. And then we send that three-dimensional model to a company here in Georgia uh, called 3D Solutions. And uh, Gary Golden and his staff there will print the models for us. Uh, they are famous. Their company is famous. They make all kinds of movie props. Uh, we have a big movie industry in, in Atlanta now, most people know about. We're kind of the new Hollywood here. So his business is built around that. So they print us a prototype out of plastic. And then we try and fit it onto the bike and see what it's see how it fits. So in, invariably nothing fits, and so we'll cut. We can cut on this, cut, file, grind, chop, do whatever we want to kind of modify it and get it to look like something. But then I, when I actually get it on the bike, I'll find that you know, I, and stand back and stare at it. I think, well, this tilted line doesn't look good. Um, there's not enough meat behind it. Um, I want it to wrap around the foot more. So w once you get to this stage, it usually takes two cracks, at least, with uh, printing. Uh, so what I'll do then is mock this part up with more pieces of cardboard. And you can kind of see some evolutions. You know, we were here. We added this. And I still felt like we needed more. And so I'll do this. And I can take this, and I have a trick I do where I'll print the, to scale the, a two-dimensional view of Adam's model. And then I'll take my part that I've created with cardboard and such, and I can trace over it. And then I can take a picture of that and send it to Adam. Or sometimes, if it's more complex, I'll just put this in a box. Or he'll drive by, and one day when he's got time and pick things up, and uh, off he goes. So he does another CAD rendering. Uh, we have <clears throat> another printing done. And at that point, hopefully, we're getting the actual mechanical fitment right. And then the last time will be you know, one more aesthetic take at the aesthetics to make sure that it looks right. So 
with the final version of this, I wanted to, when you stood kind of this way looking at the bike, I wanted the kickstand pad to have a nice vertical line. And I wanted the lines on the bike to look, look like Honda had put it there. Um, in fact, Honda, by the way, I don't know why you put this little teeny foot on a bike that weighs 950 pounds, but thanks, because I'm going to get to sell some parts here. So keep putting those little feet on gold wings for me. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, uh, and so I wanted to change that. And so we added that. Now at this point, I know we're close enough in mechanical fitment and uh, the design is close enough that uh, I'm not gonna waste the money on having more printing done. The other thing I tried to do was get it so that if you come around here and look, I, I wanted it to appear to be basically perpendicular to the bike as well when the bike was tilted over. So it, it looks nice when it's up and it looks really nice when it's down. So trying to find the balance of those was one of the tricks. And so then from there, we'll do some first article of machining and uh, then we'll put it on the bike and scratch it on the ground and see how it all fits and works. Uh, one thing I wanted to do was put a nice, cham we decided to do was put a nice chamfer around the bottom edge of the part so that as you're swinging it down, if you've already got it close to the ground, you don't create burrs and kind of a mess there in the aluminum. Uh, and then I decided instead of one set screw i thought it would be best because uh there's some products out that have one set screw that will come loose over time uh this is kind of a product a problem for a product like this because you're putting a ton of weight on it and it can the weight can wiggle it on the foot so i decided to add two set screws uh one which actually wraps behind the foot and makes it impossible for the foot to ever fall off, even if it were to get loose over time. So one screw is actually tucked behind the foot and this, it could not fall off. So, uh, so between the two of them, they put you know, a lot of pressure against it and hold it pretty tight. We still want to lock tight the screws when you install this. So we get first articles, we make sure they fit. And once we're happy with that, uh, you know, we actually created a model for the 2001 to 2017 as well. And we got that all fit up. Um, and then the next step is trying to get it to look the way we want. So uh, with the new bike here, this matte finish is all over the bike. So we, we had the aluminum sandblasted to give it that matte look and texture. And then, of course, the last step is hard coat anodizing. So hard coat is not just a color treatment. It's a very, very durable finish. Um, that is actually difficult to even drill into once it's there. Uh, normal anodizing colors the surface of metal, but uh, hard coat anodize is actually penetrates into the metal and is, it's above and below the surface of the metal. So it's, it's very, very durable and very, very hard. And in this application where you're going to be kicking this thing with a boot for five years or 10 years or whatever, however long you own the bike, we wanted to try and do our best to keep it looking good over time. So there you go. There's kind of, it looks like a simple product, but a lot goes into bringing it to life. And, uh, and so I thought uh, I'll do a couple more like this because uh, people have been asking. So my name is Max. Don't forget, if you want to find me, I'm max at traction.com. Our website is www.traction.com, T-R-A-X-X-I-O-N. All these products are available there. Uh, you can email me with questions or ideas for videos. I, you guys give me lots of great ideas for videos. And uh, so if you like these, please share with your friends. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and keep this cool content coming.